getting ready to check out and we heard four or five shots and we hit the ground immediately and then the cashier she hit the ground with us and started kind of crawling away and then we heard another four or five shots a witness recounts the frightening moments during a shooting today at Boise's Town Square Mall that left two dead, four others hurt. It happened just before 2 o'clock this afternoon. Boise police, along with agencies from all over Ada County, responded to reports of multiple shots fired. 90 minutes ago, Boise Chief Ryan Lee confirmed that two had died and among the four injured, a police officer. Here's where it started. Boise police sent out this tweet at 2 11 this afternoon saying they were responding to the mall and asking people to stay away from the area. About 10 minutes later, they said they had at least one person in custody. Now, four hours later, they still have the scene secured as they continue to investigate. Traffic around the mall was at a standstill for hours as police set up a perimeter and blocked off some roads. We have team coverage tonight on the News at 6. Joe Paris is on the corner of Emerald and Milwaukee with a scene there. Andrew Bartline is at police headquarters where the chief and mayor spoke. But first, Katya Stepovic joins us live outside the mall near Macy's with the very latest. Katya. Yeah, hi guys. We've been out here for several hours today and I will say the mood right now is rather eerie and ominous as things start to quiet down and you can see there's still a little bit of action behind me and I'll step out. You can see the fire department vehicles have left, ambulances have left, but it looks like a crime scene trailer is still here kind of putting the pieces together. You've got several uh, Ada County Sheriff's Officer vehicles as well as Boise PD. Um, but the mood here, again, I want to go back to that. I spoke to a lot of witnesses that were just constantly in shock. And, and frightened when I got here, not knowing really what's going on or where their loved ones are and if they were okay. And I spoke to many people just going about their day like we all would, right, at the mall, shopping for Christmas gifts or just shopping for the daily errands. And uh, this is the last thing that many pictured uh, to happen. And this is what some of them had to say as they recount those moments. Uh, my friends and I were drinking and having food at Old Chicago, uh, just paid our bill. And then we saw a bunch of people running out of the main main entrance. Um, look, like they were panicked. Looking back, uh, we entered, exited the main entrance. Um, someone said they heard some popping noises. Um, that's when we were told from the restaurant side to either stay in or stay out. So we exited the uh, main entrance, and that's when security pulled up and said there's active shooter. Yeah, panic and fear are the two words I'm hearing a lot today. And a lot of witnesses tell me I actually got more information re recently from new witnesses that say they heard over 12 gunshots fired today. And just business owners not knowing what's going on, never expecting this to happen here in Idaho. Again, we talked about this earlier. A lot of people saying this is not Idaho. This is not my people. This is not where I'm from. And this stuff does not happen. And it's very, very scary. And I think we're all going home tonight with the question of why. We don't know very much about this suspect. He is in custody. Uh, people tell me that he is a tall white male, but that's about it. A lot of questions and uh, we're just all wanting answers. Mark. Yeah, Boise Police Chief also not saying what the motivation is at this time, saying it's too premature in the investigation at this point. Mm -hmm. Katya, thank you so much for all your hard work out there. And this is new at six Brookfield Properties. The owners of the mall sent this statement this evening. They wrote, quote, we are heartbroken and are working closely with the Boise Police Department as they investigate the circumstances that led to this terrible tragedy. We're grateful for their quick response and continued partnership. They go on to say this is devastating for our entire community and our thoughts are with the victims, family and friends during this unimaginable time. The mall also says out of respect for the community, they'll be closed tomorrow. Let's go to Joe now, who's been at his post at Milwaukee and Emerald for hours. You can see on this map, he is next to Dave and Buster's across the street. Uh, Joe, that remains the scene of an active investigation at this moment. What have you learned since we last heard from you at 5 o'clock? Well, Mark, if you've been with us uh, earlier this afternoon, you'll notice the scene behind me looks significantly different now. In this spot where you see all the police tape in the middle of the road, there was actually two cars earlier this afternoon, both blocked off. Um, within the last 10 minutes, we actually watched a white SUV that was here for several hours and appeared to have bullet holes through it. We watched what looked like non-police people come in, go through the car with police, and then actually drive that car out of here. It is unclear who those people were or how they're involved in this situation. Again, though, it looked like 
They were not law enforcement as they were dressed in street clothes and officers were working with them to go through the car. Um, you can see further on though in this scene, there's actually a down Boise police motorcycle in the very distance there of the back of the Dave and, Dust, D Dave and Buster's parking lot. We've had a lot of questions from our viewers about what exactly happened back there. And while we don't know for sure what did happen in the back of the Dave and Buster's parking lot, we can tell you that police dispatch was sending out information to officers here on scene, letting them know that a possible suspect from the ball, the mall shooting was dressed in all black and spotted here behind this Dave and Buster's area. Uh, a short time later, a dispatch report was put out that the suspect was in custody. I spoke to a woman who says she works across the street from this area, and she said she was finishing up her lunch and just getting some work done when she heard what she described as pop, 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 pop. She said it sounded loud. It sounded like gunshots, but she wasn't exactly sure right away. But she says now that she realized what she heard, it sounded like a full clip was unloaded from very close to her office. Uh, she said that she and some coworkers came out here just to see what was going on. And at that point, very quickly, she said the entire area was surrounded by Boise police officers. Uh, it's interesting to note we've watched officers and investigators go through this entire area, even across the street into the target parking lot with metal detectors and really searching for something. Um, if you are in the area or if you've seen some of our video, the entire target parking lot, a large section of it, it's also blocked off and people were asking if the incident bled over into the parking lot, if there was another incident in target. Well, we can tell you what we're led to believe is that officers are looking for evidence. They're looking for something related to this entire scene. Again, with metal detectors, we saw them walking through uh, trying to just pick up a signal on anything. We also watched a group of police investigators go through the entire parking lot car by car trying to see if they could find anything. Again, we're assuming they're looking for bullets or, or bullet casings. Um, another thing that we did notice in the back of the Dave and Buster's parking lot is that there was a lot of evidence markers um, in a really concentrated area. I'd say about a dozen of them for what I could see across the street. And while we don't know exactly what those evidence markers are marking, I can tell you from uh, a previous uh, experience, we can say that if officers, for example, do have a large collection of evidence, maybe bullet casings, maybe something like that, they mark every single one specifically and take pictures so they can know where that casing was and how it was related to the entire incident. Um, one thing, though, I also want to come back to here as we look in the middle of the street, still blocked off, it appears they're still searching for evidence in this area. I've seen questions from some of our viewers about the bullet holes in the white SUV that we showed earlier this afternoon. Mark, we don't know exactly what happened. We're waiting to get detailed, confirmed information from the Boise Police Department. When we get that info, we will relay it as soon as possible. Obviously, that area right there you can see on Milwaukee is still closed and will be for the foreseeable future, Joe. And just to clarify, these two scenes, we haven't heard from police because the chief didn't take any questions. We don't know if these are related uh, positively at this point, but we will continue to work to find that out. And Joe, I do have a question for you. Earlier in your live shot, you showed us a car that had at least one bullet hole through it. That's now gone. Do we know what happened with that car? Right, so again, that was the white SUV. It was just talking about at the beginning of the report, if you missed it, there was a white SUV that was parked here in the middle of the road that again appeared to have a bullet hole through the passenger and the driver's side at the front of the car. Again, about 10, 15 minutes ago, we watched uh, what looked like police investigators or police leaders walk two people in with street clothes, walk them up to the car, help them go through the car, took a few things in and out of it, and then we watched them drive the car away from the scene. You may notice there was a second car here as well that also was driven out of the area. Okay, Joe, thank you so much. Well, you just referred to, alluded to the fact there was a press conference today. Mm -hmm. Andrew Bartline was there this afternoon when that took place at 4.30, live on our 4 o'clock show, when Boise's police chief, and uh, Andrew, a very emotional mayor, addressed mm -hmm. this attack. Uh, what more can you tell us about that? Yeah, well, one of the first things that Ryan Lee told us, Police Chief Ryan Lee, uh, off the top, was that it is an ongoing scene, an ongoing investigation. We're seeing that from Katya and Joe's reporting uh, just a moment ago as well. Did confirm six total were shot, two dead, four injured. Of those four injured, one of them is a police officer. Again, that's information confirmed from Chief Ryan Lee with the Boise Police Department. He said they received a call at around 1.50 p.m. about this shooting at the mall. Uh, Boise police then promptly responded. There is a man on scene uh, who was a suspect. They exchanged gunfire. That's how that officer was injured. And that suspect that uh, Boise police exchanged gunfire uh, shots with um, has been um, 
put into custody. They do believe he's acting alone, though they said they're still sorting through the mall, clearing it out, ensuring that that is true. But that is the police department's belief. Last we heard from Chief Lee that uh, that suspect was acting alone. Now, they couldn't speak to any motivation. We know there are many questions. A lot of people tried to ask questions, but because it is an ongoing investigation, the Boise Police Department would not answer any questions. But the police chief did give us a pretty good summary. We'll play out for you now. I cannot stress enough how traumatic this event is for the community at large, as well as for those that were witnesses or are the families of those involved or involved themselves. With that said, at this time, we're aware of at least six people that were injured during this incident. We are working to notify the families of anybody that was injured. Amongst the injured includes one police officer, and we are sad to report that at least two people were killed in this event. We would ask that the community at large keep their families in, of the deceased in their thoughts, and that they also respect their privacy of any of the immediately affected. Now, because there was a shooting with a police officer, that portion of this will be investigated by the Critical Incident Task Force, pretty standard protocol, uh, what we've seen here in Idaho. Additionally, the rest of this will be investigated by the Boise Police Department. Now, Mark, you mentioned off the top here that uh, Boise Mayor Lauren McLean spoke to this as well, and Katia told us earlier in the show, too, that people are really shooken by this because, you know, th this is Idaho. They're saying this isn't my home. This isn't the state I grew up with. We're not used to seeing this kind of stuff around here, especially in Boise and the mayor spoke to that as well. Countless people found themselves in a situation they never would have nor should have expected. As we think about those that were hurt today, my heart goes out to those who sheltered in place, those who saw um, this crime those who weren't sure if they'd see a loved one again or who knew that they had someone they cared about in the mall. And on that, I want to reiterate what the chief has said. People still in the mall are safe. People in Boise are safe. Your safety is our priority. Now, hearing a lot of emotion from the mayor there, connecting with people, as this is something that has really hit the community hard. But this is all the information that we were able to get confirmed from Police Chief Ryan Lee here today at this press conference. All the other information we've been able to collect has come from Katya and Joe out there on the streets at the scene. Again, no questions were answered because this is an ongoing investigation. Mark Morgan. Andrew Bartline reporting live for us tonight. Andrew, thank you.